Good. Thanks a lot. So uh, I'll use just the first 10 seconds to say how excited I am to see you all in person. Uh, I'm sure everybody feels this way. Um, and thanks to the organizers for, for the invitation here. And before we go to polar systems, let me just tell you about the kind of problems that we've been investigating recently on the theory side. And uh, these are mostly in the context of quantum plasmonics, where you have nanoparticles, metallic nanoparticles called nanoantennas. These particles are, are able to focus electromagnetic radiation to small domains in space. And then if you manage to put a molecule in, in, in there in such a hotspot, then the light matter interaction is very strong. Okay? And then you have all the different effects going beyond electric dipole approximation or maybe strong coupling. So, uh, yeah, this kind of problems. And recently we have switched to the problem of graphene antennas. So graphene with nanoparticles are able to focus this light even stronger, so they sustain some uh, extreme plasmonic excitations. You need to put your molecule very close to such a graphene antenna to have the interaction. But then except for the optical interaction channel, you also have electronic interaction channel. They can exchange electrons. And we are looking at how these two uh, channels for interaction interplay and, and yeah, what, what happens, how, how this interaction changes then. And finally, the last part is coherent quantum optics. So the picture here represents a, an ensemble of molecules uh, through which uh, optically dressed molecules through which a pulse of light propagates and is modified or modifies the medium. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is of course developed with a group of PhD students and also we have some excellent collaborators listed here. And uh, yeah, those who are listed are, have actually contributed to the, the, the subjects that are presented at this conference, which are on these two, uh, yeah, on these two subjects. So I'll first, before we go to these polar systems, I will just mention uh, the, the, the Graphene Plasmonics project, which is developed with the guys with, from Karlsruhe and from, uh, from uh, the Nostia in, in Spain. And there will be two posters on the subject, one Actually today, so Miriam is putting up her poster today, not on Tuesday, and she will discuss these two interaction channels, optical versus electronic, and, and how such antennas influence optical properties of, of uh, quantum emitters. And then on Tuesday, Marvin will tell you about how to classify and identify uh, different sorts of optical resonances in nanostructures. And now for this project um, on polar quantum systems, this one is developed with a group of Saverio Pascazia in uh, Italy, in, ba in Bari, and then with Giovanni, who is both in Bari and Warsaw and Gdańsk, and he's uh, sort of delocalized, and we'll have a poster here as well, and with Piotr Gwadesh, the student from Torun. So, yeah. The main message of the talk is that uh, polar systems, as you drive them resonantly, can emit radiation, and that radiation can be at a frequency that is orders of magnitude different from the transition frequency, from the resonant transition frequency, okay? That's the most important message. It's been investigated in different kinds of systems, and we investigated in the special system that is molecular ensembles. But first, let me just tell you about the mechanism of that surprising effect. Okay, so polar, sy polar systems are characterized with permanent dipole moments, okay? So when you have an eigenstate of, of a polar system, um, well, the system does not have an inversion symmetry, which means the wave function is may be neither even nor, nor odd, okay? So there are these two contributions, and due to that, the average dipole moment in an eigenstate, this is the same eigenstate here, this may be non-zero, okay? And this may be non-zero both for the ground state and for the excited state. And this means you can have polar, sorry, you can have permanent dipoles in these two states. And except for that, you also have a transition dipole moment that governs, yeah, well, transitions between the states, okay? So if I write the Hamiltonian for the slight matter interaction in the two-level approximation, um, and in a dipolar frame, I will have this E, that is electric field, times the dipole moment operator of the molecule. Okay, and traditionally, for a non-polar system, this is the Hamiltonian matrix. Okay, so you have the transition dipole moment here. And this describes hopping between the ground and the excited states. 
And this is, of course, the Rabi oscillation okay, between the ground and the excited state that is induced by the field that you illuminated with. So let's say this field is resonant. But now, if additionally you have permanent dipoles, you have additional terms in the Hamiltonian that I will show you in a moment here. Yeah. Um, and these terms do not induce transitions. They are on the diagonal. These extra terms induce some energy shifts. Okay, And these energy shifts here are in phase because they are driven by the same sinusoid, but they have different amplitude. Okay, and what it does to these Rabi oscillations is, well, this oscillation here will induce some sort of detuning, okay, some fluctuating detuning, and then you can, well, when, when the detuning fluctuates, you also have uh, a fluctuating Rabi frequency. Okay, now the one thing I didn't mention just a moment ago is that the Rabi frequency is uh, orders of magnitude different, sorry, lower than the transition frequency. This point and doesn't work too, too well. I will use this one, okay? Yeah, so tradition, uh, usually, normally, this Rabi frequency is like megahertz. You can tune the, 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 you can use the stronger field, then you can make it uh, a couple of orders of magnitude larger, but normally, this is still way smaller, it should say, than the transition frequency small omega. Sorry for these mistakes. Okay, so we have that, and then um, ah, and then uh, the 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 mechanism of the effect that I'm speaking of is that well, when, when you have these Rabi oscillations, the population is first in the ground state, then in the excited state, and then again in the ground state, the expectation value for the dipole moment oscillates, right, with the Rabi frequency. So we have two contributions to the emitted radiation, the transition dipole that emits at the transition frequency. You can have a mollo triplet if the coupling is strong enough. But then you additionally have this dipole oscillating at the Rabi frequency that is associated with this permanent dipole moments being modulated. Okay, and that's the effect. And now, so yeah, and now uh, the good thing is you can optically tune this transition frequency, but now you can uh, evaluate the emission power for, for such a uh, dipole, for, the, yeah, for such a molecule that for a dipole scales with the square with the dipole moment and the fourth power of the frequency, and that turns out to be low if you take a dipole moment of one atomic unit. If you take a rather large Rabi frequency, you still have a very low emission power of less than one photon per second. So. This might be a nice and interesting radiation source, but it's pretty inefficient. So the two strategies you can take, or at least two strategies you can take to crank it up, you can either enhance the field, okay? Uh, yeah, so that will scale with the fourth power, so that should be pretty efficient. But here we already took quite a large number. And another, well, even trivial possibility is just to take more sources. And people have been investigating this in, uh, in quantum dots, but still the number of quantum dots you can exploit is still limited. Well, we want to have a look at a, diff uh, at a system whose physics is different, mm, that is molecular ensembles. Okay? We want to look at these ensembles, uh, first of all, uh, because you can have a lot of them, really, so you can crank up your signal a lot, we hope. And then the second reason is we have this FAMO lab in Torun where they make experiments with these ensembles. So they could uh, help us understand how this system works. And in fact, they did. So Piotr Kciswo was involved in this project and he helped us a lot to, to discuss uh, the molecular properties. So the steps are very easy. We take an ensemble of molecules. This is a macroscopic ensemble of the order of tens of centimeters. You Make it coherent, that is, you co-orient the molecules, for instance, with the static electric field. They have permanent dipoles, so that should be possible. And then you illuminate it and collect the signal, okay? And uh, we want to make a theory that will describe it and estimate the signal using that theory in a feasible case. All right, so as we said, there are these two components of the system. There is a medium described with a density matrix, depending on position, because it's a large sample. And then we have the field that has a drive, 
a resonant uh, electromagnetic wave and the signal that builds up at zero at time equal to zero it's 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 non existing okay and the field is described with the wave equation with the source being the medium polarization that we can evaluate from the left hand side okay and uh, then the molecules these are described with the mass equation this is the relaxation term spontaneous emission to phasing and the interaction hamiltonian here contains this dipole that has both the off diagonal and diagonal elements okay so the permanent and induced dipoles and then this all goes into this polarization and that will induce polarization components that oscillate either at the transition or at the, or at the Rabi frequency Okay, we make some approximations because these equations, well, in the first, uh, well, uh, at, the, at the beginning they are pretty complicated, but you can simplify them to the form that is very familiar to those people who work with Bloch equations. And this form is reminiscent of just a simple two level system being driven with a resonant field. Okay, so you have the Rabi frequency, you have some detuning here. But, well, both the detuning and the Rabi frequency, these are modulated with the terms that are time dependent and position dependent and also depend on this uh, permanent dipoles, scale with these permanent dipoles. So this is what we expected to find in the system exactly. Mm, this might be disturbing because the form of this doesn't look familiar at all, but actually if you put these permanent dipoles to zero, it goes back to the familiar form that we expect where E is the driving amplitude. Okay, and uh, for the Maxwell part, we have the source that oscillates at the, uh, so, sorry, everywhere here, this oscillates at the Rabi frequency, but there is a source that is proportional to this permanent dipole, and also some correction that comes from the transition one. The code for this is open. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's written by Piotr. And finally, we get the, we get the result. Uh, so here you can see how the signal builds up upon illumination with a drive whose envelope is shown here. We take some typical uh, values of the parameters, that is like one atomic unit for the dipole moment, typical transition frequency and so on. But this is just an example. We see that the signal build, builds up in time, it, in position you see it here, the grayish rectangle is the medium, um, and we get a signal of of the frequency of two gigahertz. So this works as a proof of principle. I just wanted to comment more on the part that I have uh, played it over somehow, that is the orientation of the molecules, because this step is pretty much untrivial and will depend on what kind of molecules we have. And um, yeah, so we chose the simplest thing possible that is a two, two, two atom molecule uh, heteronuclear to, to have asymmetry and then these molecules already have a lot of degrees of freedom electronic vibrational rotation and so on so we choose those lithium hydride molecules uh, for which you can decouple all these different kinds of excitations and we focus on this lowest rotational excitations to make things simple and evaluate uh, the same thing for a realistic case okay and there uh, well, for these molecules, the rotational states can be represented with a rigid rotor model. So you can represent the states as spherical harmonics. You can plug in the constant electric field into the Hamiltonian, diagonalize, and get eigenstates and energies. Okay? Eigenstates will be uh, superpositions of these. And then for these states, it's maybe more interesting to look how, how the wave function modifies as you as you implement the electric field, as you, you know, act with a static electric field on the molecule. So this here is the probability density of orientation of one nucleus with respect to the other. And initially, it's rotationally symmetric, and it becomes asymmetric as the field is uh, oriented upwards. Okay, and what you see here are uh, permanent dipoles induced in these molecules. And you see that there is the sweet spot where the difference between permanent dipoles of two states is the largest. And this is what we decide on. This is the number that we take. We can evaluate the transition dipoles for these states as well, energies. We plug this in. 
into the software and get now a result that describes an actual physical system. You see here that the signal is pretty stable and also the, the transition frequency is an order of magnitude larger than before, so this is now optimized. And the power that we get is now micro microscopic. So the conclusion of this is that you can actually use, um, I mean, that it, it's a promising platform to realize, uh, to realize the effect of phasing at low frequencies. Okay, the, the, again, the, the lasing frequency would be tunable with optical means. Now, do I have time? I probably don't have time anymore. Okay, then I will just uh, advertise these two posters. Piotr will tell you more on this subject, while Giovanni will tell you more about light interaction with extended quantum systems on his poster during, during this poster session on Wednesday. Mm, I will skip the, this advertisement and just go to conclusions. So, Asymmetric systems, when driven, are sources of radiation at a low frequency. Uh, coherent molecular media are a good candidate to realize the experiments on, on, on the subject, while extension beyond electric di point dipole approximation is also an interesting subject that will be presented at the poster session. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Carolina, mm -hmm. for the great talk. Uh, questions? So, uh, you don't have to know the answer to this question, but okay. I just uh, asked myself, maybe Misha Ivanov is here and maybe he can help. So, uh, of course, there is a lot of work in the completely different area of laser physics, of atomic physics, which is this ultra fast, super intense interaction of mm -hmm. molecules with uh, with light, where so-called high harmonic are gen high harmonics are generated, which are also I mean you can go to mm -hmm. 400 uh, times bigger frequencies than the frequency of the driving laser, which typically is low. These are in infrared or mid infrared, mm -hmm. uh, better to say uh, lasers. Now I know a lot of works on molecules there, but are there works on uh, molecules with permanent dipole moment, which would, of course, modify the uh, subtle point equations for the dynamics of electrons and so on. So it could be a way of controlling it. Do you know anybody? I'm not familiar with these words now. I'm sorry. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Quite a bit. Sorry, Carla, Carla Faria did quite a bit of, of simulations for uh, molecules okay. with Carla, yes. Yeah. But uh, I didn't remember the effect. people, I would say, don't pay much attention to it, but uh, we, we can discuss quite a bit. Uh, and uh, what, what I would say is that to me, of course, uh, the, the most challenging part is uh, orienting the molecules. You need a fairly strong uh, DC field, uh, 150 volts per centimeter mm -hmm. of a permanent uh, electric field is not so easy. But um, since I'm already kind of commenting, then I would ask mm -hmm. a question. Uh, have you thought about uh, the effect that happens when you actually combine uh, the laser field uh, together with the uh, weak DC field. The laser field orients molecules very, very efficiently. You can mm -hmm. now uh, keep them oriented within one degree. Uh, so, sorry, aligns. Mm -hmm. But then uh, just a very weak DC field added on top uh, of the laser field would then do exactly what you want. Uh, mm -hmm. The ground rotational state will be oriented, uh, let's say, downstream, and, and the excited rotational state will be oriented upstream. This, this has been done experimentally, and uh, I think this might be very interesting. Yeah, that sounds like a very interesting but scenario, on the other and hand, I'll be happy to I have to be it, very yeah. critical huh? about this as a source, uh, because if we're interested in generating, let's say, terahertz radiation, 
Uh, terahertz is tricky. It's a good selling point, but actually getting to terahertz. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. Honestly, we, we could think about generating mm -hmm. these low frequency components by simply wave mixing uh, fundamental and second harmonic in the driving field and then using it on the comedian. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry about the, the critical remark, but it doesn't okay. take anything mm -hmm. away from the beauty of the work. Thank you. Further questions? Is there anything in the chat? No. Well, if there are no further questions, then thank you, Carolina, again. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.